G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Way Photography. In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at simple solutions for some rather common Photoshop problems. If you happen to have a Photoshop problem, feel free to email me at adam at easywayphotography.com. Send me a description of what the problem is that you're having and a copy of the image that you're referring to, roughly say two or 3,000 pixels on the long edge. And with any luck, I'll get around and select your image and feature it on this YouTube channel. For this particular video, Scott, a friend of mine, you can look him up on Instagram under Scott B Photography. Uh, he's very popular, an incredible photographer. Uh, so look up his work on Instagram, has sent me a couple of images here. Let's duck back to Lightroom. Really interesting location, great composition. I believe these are called the Remarkable Rocks uh, in a place called Kangaroo Island in South Australia. And he didn't have much luck with the sunrise or the sunset on this occasion. But the day before or the day after, also on Kangaroo Island, he captured this pretty incredible sunset, I think it was. And he asked, is there an easy way to substitute this particular sky, this dull grey sky, with this blazing gorgeous sky here, uh, and create a fine art version of this particular image. In this case, we're not looking to tell reality. Um, we're just looking to have a bit of fun and try and make the most of this particular image, or try and make more from this particular image. Okay, so I think there is an easy solution. So let's take a look at how that works. Now I've got both of these images in Lightroom. So the first thing we're going to do is to hold down Command or Control and click to select both of those images. And then we then move up to the photo menu here in Lightroom. Select Edit In, and we would normally choose Edit In Adobe Photoshop CC 2017 for a single image. But because we want both of these images as layers in Photoshop in the same workspace, we choose Open as Layers in Photoshop. Give that a second. So we now have both of those images as layers in Photoshop in this one workspace. You can see we have the rocks as the top layer here and the sky as the bottom layer. Now I would prefer that the rocks are on the bottom. So all I'm going to do is click on that layer and drag it below the other layer. Okay, just like that. Next, I'm going to position the sky so that the horizon lines up with the layer below. And the way that I like to do that is to click on the sky layer, lower the opacity, so we can kind of see the horizon of both of the layers. Okay, and then click on the Move tool, which is the top tool in the tool panel here. And we just move that up. I'm also going to just, in this case, drag the image off to the side there so I can get a clearer view of the horizon below. It's roughly there. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but closer the better. Somewhere there looks good. Change the opacity back to 100% there. And then we're going to turn the visibility of that sky layer off. Okay, just with that little icon. So we're now back to the Remarkable Rocks layer here. Click back on that layer so it's highlighted because we're going to now make a selection. And when we make a selection, we always want the layer highlighted that we're using to make the selection. And we want to select this kind of rather jagged, intricate sky around these rocks. So we want to have the rocks selected. Now let's click on the Quick Selection tool or use W as a keyboard shortcut. Just make that brush a little bigger using the square bracket keys there. And all we're going to do is to just click away from any of the details here and you'll see it just kind of snap around like that. Absolutely perfect. So we now have what looks to be a really accurate selection, but it's generally quite rough at this stage, straight off the Quick Selection tool. It tends to be a little jagged. So we move up and click the Select and Mask option up in the top menu here. And I won't go into the full details because you can find those full details at easywayphotography.com. All we're going to do 
Actually, before I do that, let's zoom in and I'll show you the issue that we're trying to fix up here. This is a raw file, so or a full res file. But can you see those little kind of jagged where it goes? So the red is defining the mast area, essentially. And can you see those little jagged areas where it's not quite wrapping around the rock absolutely perfectly? As soon as we move this radius bar up to around 10 pixels, you should notice a pretty dramatic change. Okay, did you see that change? It gets a bit fuzzy for a second, but let me move that back. Okay, so see all those little jagged areas where it's not quite perfectly wrapped? I'll just move this up to around 10 pixels. And you can see now those little jagged areas are gone. And we have this incredible selection now. Absolutely awesome. Okay, click OK. We'll zoom back out. And what we're going to do is click on our sky mask. We'll turn that on. And then go ahead and add a layer mask to the sky layer. And what that will do, we'll instantly grab this selection and add that to the mask. So let's click on a mask and add that to the sky layer. And you can see it's done a pretty great job of adding the sky in behind the rocks here. So that's, that's substituting the sky. The sky is now substituted. However, we need to do a little bit of refining to match the two layers together. So whenever we're dropping in a new sky, we need to match both the sky and the foreground together to make it look convincing. And the way we do that, we either need to modify the sky or modify the foreground. Okay, so in this case, I can tell that the foreground is a little bit too bright and it's lacking a little bit of color cast from this gorgeous orange sky. So the foreground should be darker and also have a slight orange tint. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can fix that up. And let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So click back on the background or the rocks layer there. And we're going to select a curves layer. Okay, and we're just going to click once in the middle and darken down. And you can see already that it's starting to match up much better than what it was before. And the reason that this particular curves layer is only affecting uh, the remarkable rocks layer is because it's below the sky layer. Okay, so there's the sky layer up above. Now layers only affect the layers below and not the layers above. Okay, so we don't need any fancy clipping masks or anything like that as long as the layer that we're affecting is below and the layer that we don't want to affect is above. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit of that orange cast. And the way we're going to add that orange cast is to select a solid color layer. So we move down to our adjustment layers icon, a little black and white cookie at the base of our layer panel, and choose solid color, the very top option there. And you can see it's now placing a solid color over our foreground section of this image, which is really handy because if we move outside the menu, we can now choose one of the colors from the sky itself. Now one of these colors here, one of the more vibrant ones like that's probably going to work a little bit better. Click OK. We now change the blend mode from normal to soft light. And this will give a gorgeous orange cast. In fact, it's a little bit over the top. Um, but you can see that beautiful orange cast that it's giving to the foreground. However, as I said, I feel that's a little over the top. So we now double click back on the solid color icon. And we can find or modify the color ever so slightly. Something like that probably works. Yeah, that's looking... Pretty good. So I'm just, just by eye, just looking for something that looks round about the right color cast. And we click OK. So we've now gone from that image. We've dropped in a new sky, but it didn't look convincing. And then we darken that down and added the color cast. So we're getting pretty close, OK? 
I'm now pretty happy that those images match together. So we can do a little bit of processing on the image overall. And the way we do that is to click back to our top layer. So the next series of adjustments move onto the top and affect both the sky and the foreground. First of all, we might look at doing an auto curves layer. So we click on our adjustment icon here. And keep in mind, if you want an incredibly simple yet incredibly powerful complete workflow for landscape photography, make sure you jump over and check out easywavephotography.com. So we're going to click on the curves layer here and then up the top click auto. And that looks pretty good, but let's just double check the other options by holding down alt or option and clicking auto again. We get this menu here. And we'll just click through these. One looks a little bit pink. That's quite nice. That's a little bit bright. Okay, so I think I like enhance monochromatic contrast and then click OK. Okay, so it didn't have a huge impact. Let's move on. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of contrast. So curves. couple of points on that curves graph. Again, all of this is explained at easywavephotography.com in much, much more detail. A little bit of contrast like that. Yeah, that looks great. And maybe we'll just brighten up a few areas of the rocks here. So again, adjustment layers icon, curves, one point in the middle, drag up. Something like that. Command or control I to invert that mask. B for brush. Set our brush at around 50-50. It's my favorite settings, 50-50. Hardness down at zero. Square bracket keys to make that brush a little bigger. We can just paint on a little bit of that light. Now, obviously, the light source is over here on the horizon. So, look, I mean, we need to keep that in mind when we're creating this light source. So, we don't really want to paint too much light on the back of this rock here. Okay. We really want to keep that in mind. And with that in mind, the foreground probably wouldn't be as bright as we see here. So let's go down to our adjustment icon, choose curves again for darkening, drag that down, command or control I to invert the mask to black. And let's just paint out some of this light that probably wouldn't be there. It's conceivable that it could be maybe reaching the top of that rock. It's unlikely, but I guess even bouncing off the sky down is a big possibility. Something like that. Definitely could be hitting that edge of the rock. We can enhance that a little as well. So let's choose, again, adjustment layers, curves. I'll add a kind of a bit of contrast. So one point, lift that up and then maybe just drag that back. It's creating or enhancing that light on the rock just here. That's all I'm looking at at the moment. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Again, command or control I to invert and just a nice big brush. Don't try and paint inside the lines because it will create kind of a nasty light bleed halo effect. So we just let that paint outside the lines. We might just add just a little hint on some of these other areas. Okay. All right, looking pretty good. Let's go back to the beginning. So we've got this really beautiful image of the Remarkable Rocks. Great composition. The sky's doing absolutely nothing for it. A day or two before or after, Scott grabbed this other sky. So we've dropped that in there. 
but it looks absolutely terrible like a cardboard cutout at the moment. So we needed to match the sky by darkening and adding a color cast to the foreground. There we go. In fact, that color cast might be a little bit too much. Let's just lower the opacity. That's better. And then we went and added an auto curve. Not a huge difference. We then went and added some contrast across the entire image there. We then added a little bit of light into that subject feature rocks there. You can see that. We then darkened up some areas to try and make it a little bit more convincing. And then we also added a few more highlights. So a fairly simple solution to what looked to be a fairly complex problem. As I said before, feel free to send me your image and your Photoshop problem to adam at easywayphotography.com. Thank you for watching along and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.